Hello and welcome to National Focus for Monday, April 15, 2024. I am Adicia Burton. In the headlines, Ministry of Housing announces new home ownership opportunity. New fire station under construction in Grand Bay. And a new farm access road for cottage constituency. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. I love the freedom when I'm out there. Simply put, the war is from shore, none of that out there. And it's my daily bread, I learned it from my dad. My dad is one of the senior guys here who catch the biggest fish around here. And he's top with the red snappers. It's a family thing. I'm the only one fishing right now in the family. Just keeping it going. I enjoy bringing them up, man. <laughs> Sometimes you have a yellowfin tuna, 400 pounds. Man, let me tell you, that's just a joy out there. I enjoy going out there and just holding the big fish. I don't lift weights, I lift fish. The morning of my fishing trip, I would get up, make a little spice tea. Then I come down here, I have my GPS, which most fishermen are supposed to have that. Normally I prepare the day before, because whenever you go out there, you must have ice. Ice is a must for preservation of the fish. So I always make sure I have everything the day before. My fish represents me, and I bring good quality fish ashore, simply because the restaurants themselves, they have to show a quality product. Tourism and agriculture go hand in hand, that's what I think. We're all connected. It's, it's like a big machine and I'm just so proud to be a part of it. My name is Brandon Carlyle and tourism is my business. Welcome back. In an effort to increase affordable housing solutions for Dominican residents, the Ministry for Housing and Urban Development has embarked on a new initiative to promote home ownership through the sale of residential lots at subsidized rates. Minister for Housing and Urban Development, Honorable Melissa Popon Skerritt, revealed details on the new home ownership opportunity. Today marks an important milestone as we unveil an extraordinary opportunity for you to turn your dreams of home ownership into a reality through the affordable sale of state lands. This initiative is not just a promise. It is a commitment that we made in last year's budget announcement. Um, this is a testament to our unwavering dedication to providing accessible residential opportunities for all. The initiative stems from the ministry's desire to address challenges facing home ownership in Dominica. We recognize the long-standing challenge of affordability in the housing sector, and we understand the deep-seated desire of individuals to own their own homes. And that's why I'm thrilled to share with you the details of 163 lots from four different sites which can be offered at subsidized rates. This will empower aspiring homeowners to build their dream houses at remarkably affordable prices. I am pleased to confirm that lots in Platma Pier, Colliho, and Hillsborough Gardens in St. Joseph are readily available for immediate purchase, presenting an exciting opportunity for eager homeowners to commence construction almost immediately. While Jimmet and Cotton Hill in Portsmouth require some infrastructural enhancement, Rest assured that our plans for necessary infrastructure development are well underway. The Ministry is fully committed to expediting these works to ensure that the lands are available to interested individuals at the earliest opportunity. Honorable Skerritt has appealed to individuals hoping to own their own property to take advantage of the opportunity. The lots are being made available in the Jimmet, Phase 7, 27 in Platma Pier, Colliho, 67 in Cotton Hill, Portsmouth, and 30 in Hillsborough Gardens, St. Joseph. This initiative is not just about affordable land. In addition to providing affordable home ownership opportunities, these state lands also present an exceptional investment prospect. With their strategic locations, there is a high potential for appreciation, ensuring that your home is not just a place to live, but a valuable asset in the future. This opportunity responds to housing demands while pursuing sustainable use and management of lands for resilient communities. We are not just helping you build personal hurricane shelters, I would say. We're helping you build homes and fulfill your dreams of home ownership. And so we encourage all interested parties to visit the Ministry of Housing, the Ministry or the Housing Division, 
to engage with our dedicated staff who will guide and support you through every step of the process. Rest assured, we are committed to supporting every successful applicant every step of the way as we embark on this exciting journey. For an appreciation of the layout of the lots, you can visit the government website or my social media page, Facebook, Melissa Popon Skerritt. There you will see multiple flyers locating, showing the placement of the lots. But don't delay, the lots are limited. Apply today and seize this extraordinary opportunity to build a brighter future for yourself and your loved ones. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Development is committed to providing affordable housing for sustainable socioeconomic development. A new fire station is being constructed in Grand Bay to serve the residents of the community and its environs. The station was designed and developed by Montreal Management Consultant Establishment and is being built to host an extended workforce. On Friday, April 12, the Ministry of National Security and Legal Affairs visited the construction site to get an update on the project. Minister for National Security and Legal Affairs, Honorable Reuben Blackmore, says with the development of the village, the construction of a fire station is necessary to improve emergency response. So as the community is emerging, and you see how the government is thinking in a futuristic standpoint, very futuristic, if you're going to have more people in a location, you're going to, they're going to be the need for one, ensuring that people who are grieved can, 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 can get them at this result, they need to have a court. And you're going to have more strain on, on, on the system in terms of emergency response, so you need to have more fire officers. But the important thing about that, the fire station building, you go there after and to, do, to take your images, is the need to have a special place for the fire appliances, the ambulance and the, ambulance and the fire truck and also to ensure that there's a certain degree of privacy as to how women and men are accommodated. We have been able, both in the police force and the fire department and all the prisons, to ensure that there's gender equity. Parliamentary representative for the Grand Bay constituency, Honorable Dr. Vince Henderson, says the construction of the fire station is significant for Grand Bay and the surrounding communities. We're very happy to see that um, we also constructed a new fire station and that too is another project that we spent a lot of time discussing and looking at the designs and seeing how it can best be executed. So we're very happy to see that work has also started on the fire station. And that, that is why I try to, in my interaction with people, even as recent as Sunday, I was seeking to explain to someone that all money that are invested in developing infrastructure, providing services to people, come from the same source. That is from the government treasury. And this is a significant project taking place in the community of Grandi and in Dominica. And, and uh, we have to be very happy to see this project taking place. And especially in the case of those being financed by the CBI, it is not our tax dollar. So we don't have to, to worry about the debt or repayment of, of um, this infrastructure. And they are essential infrastructure in the community. Project manager for MMCE, Mr. Carl Murad, gave an overview of the works being done at the ongoing fire station. For the fire station building, it's about 7,500 square feet. Uh, it includes, of course, all the offices, the living and dining facilities, rest facilities for the officers. Upstairs we have the uh, male barracks and the female barracks for uh, uh, residents, in addition to even guest uh, facility, in case they have guests from other uh, constituency. Uh, the, as for the engine room, it's good for two cars, and the building is equipped from A to Z with all what a fire station is required with regards to generators, uh, water tanks, uh, etc. That's for the uh, fire station. Uh, the finish, the architecture of the uh, buildings will complement the uh, rest of the neighborhood and the housing projects we're doing. And that's why after we're done with the magistrate court, we will renovate the police station to look as one building so it, it, it belongs. 
Deputy Fire Chief Mr. Wayne Leitan says the construction of a fire station in Grand Bay is critical. He says with the many developments taking place in Grand Bay, it was necessary to have a fire and ambulance service ready to serve the residents. It is work in progress and we have the challenge of housing in the Grand Bay area. But when you look at the firefighting capabilities in Grand Bay, we need something better. Because of development, we have a lot of development happening in this area and this area is basically sometimes can be cut off from the city. So who gives support to the Grand Bay area? It is headquarters, which is Roseau, and there can be difficulty in coming to that area. So with the level of development, we need the level of, of protection also. So we welcome the construction of the fire station. And as Mr. Muenad explained, this station will, it, it will be basically a model for construction of fire stations around the island in the future. The fire station is expected to be completed in January 2025. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Ride safe, wear a helmet, safer roads in the nature aisle. This message was brought to you by the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Welcome back. Cottage constituency continues to celebrate the successful completion of the newly rehabilitated Clifton Feeder Road. The project is expected to bring significant economic benefits and increase agricultural activity to the community. Julian Morris reports. The Clifton feeder road is now serving to motivate farmers who previously abandoned their farms due to lack of access and in other cases as new farmers who had previously abandoned their fields. When I became Parap in December of 2022, we held our first town hall meeting in Clifton um, somewhere in end of January, February. And I asked the community, you know, what are their priorities? And they had a long list. But number one on the list was the Clifton Feeder Road. Um, because being a former extension officer myself, working in that sub-region, I knew the level of productivity here once had. Um, but the condition of the road, you know, was not encouraging farmers to really um, go into farming or to expand, because access was sort of difficult. Parliamentary Representative Honorable Roland Royer says the rehabilitation effort began under the watch of the former Parliamentary Representative Reginald Ostry. As it was the number one priority in the community, the Parliamentary Representative says he sought the assistance of the Prime Minister. And we got funding through the National Authorizing Office, as any office under the 11 EDF, the envelope. Um, so the cost of the project um, is about $600,000 less VAT, and it was constructed by Sony Construction and Plywood Rentals. Um, it lasted for about six to seven weeks, and I must say they worked speedily and they completed within time and budget. Um, during construction, we were able to have a few persons from the constituents employed with, with, with the contractor, so they gained employment during that, during that time. Um, since completion, the feedback from the community, particularly farmers, is um, very positive and we have already seen some of them starting to clear and expand you know, the, the lands to invest further into agriculture. So I was very fortunate to have it done within a short piece of time, being um, coming in as a rep, um, and but thanks to the um, EU office and the, the PM for this, this critical intervention. The new farm access road has generated renewed interest in farming which is expected to result in greater productivity for the catchment area under the country by extension. We had a farmers meeting here last week, Wednesday, targeting farmers from Capuchin to Tatan. 
and we're quite a bit of farmers from from Capuchin. Um, they all express their willingness to to go back into the farm, and um, but now we're in dry season, so it's not much that they can do. So they are preparing to to clear and to wait on the rainy season so that they can actually start establishment. You know, so there are some who actually started doing some work already. You know, so I'm very happy for that, and that is a very productive, high productive area. Um, even when I was working in, in the Ministry of Culture as a frontline officer. Okay, so just for this investment, I'm happy that um, farmers will return to, to the farms. So I played my role in creating access. Um, and I, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, they can stay in it and at least increase the production and productivity in that catchment in the constituency. The new feeder road will also facilitate farmers who wish to explore new farmland in the Heights. And higher up has some very fertile soil, an uh, area called Jido. So the area, so the, 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 the road to me is just before that area, but it, it creates better access to the persons who own lands in there, okay? And on both sides of the, of the feeder road, both a left and a right side, very fertile soil as well. I know they for doing a lot of root crops when I was there around 20, 15 years ago as, as an officer, yams, um, the, the little tanyas. We had banana farms up here as well, um, cocoa, a lot of that existed here and during my time. Um, so we're hoping that we could see uh, uh, you know, a resurgence of that again um, along this feeder road. The parliamentary representative, who also has responsibility for agriculture, understands the importance of access to and from the farms. It's very important. Um, one of the days when farmers would you know, carry stuff on their heads and walk in trucks to access farms. Um, farming has become commercialized. We've been hearing about standards and quality um, so we can't afford to have produce not being transported properly. In a bad feeder road, you can have what you call mechanical damage. So that reduces the quality of the produce when you get to the market end. So when the buyer would sort and grade, they would reject you know, some of your stuff. So it's very important that you create access. One, ease of access to the farmer. He can transport his input and transport out his, his um, produce um, without any hindrances. And so it makes the farming a little more efficient. And of course, it reduces the cost of production because you will have to pay less, cost less to access to and from, from your farm. So access is, is, is essential um, because of the type of farming we, we are engaged in now. An important component of this project was consulting with constituents to ensure that they were an integral part of the process. And when you into serving people, you look at the interests and not yours. So that's why we ensured um, we did a series of town halls where we meet the constituents in different hamlets. So we did Capuchin, Clifton, Cottage, San Pajili, Tatan Lago, and ensured we asked them what are their priorities. So we have a list of projects they want, but what's the number one? So as we go along, we take out, we take funding for them, take out, you know, so, and, and, and that's our approach. So anything we deliver is not what we want to do, is what they're asked for. Um, so by that, I'm confident that we'll satisfy the needs. The farm access road has the potential to create links with tourism within the community. Yeah. Well, it could be agro-tourism as well, yeah. um, because we, we just came from Kana, so if we could package um, what we do along, along this feeder road, it could complement a whole package to go to Kana. So after you do Kana tour, you can come to the Clifton feeder road, you can see how you know, the farmers actually plant, you, you can go onto the farm and harvest yourself, spend a day on the farm with the farmer, etc. So, you know, so it's, there are multiple benefits. In, in doing this road, you know, I I won't encourage housing because I um, we want to conserve our lands for agriculture. We can put everything into housing, so I'll encourage as much persons to really invest. And not just the traditional way of, of planting. You can do, go into greenhouse production, you know, hydroponics because we have access to to water right here. You know, we have the Dawasco line running right through. You know, so farmers that can invest and ambitious in what they do can go into other cropping systems rather than the yams, the planting, we can go to short term greenhouse production, etc., um, to mix the variety of crops that they do around here. Elton Daniel is the Agricultural Extension Officer for the Capuchin sub region. The new feeder road makes his job of reaching the farmers easier. This road it serves the farmers from Clifton, and previously there were challenges with the road. Um, I remember just to the entrance. We were having great difficulty in accessing the top. Um, there was one farmer with a vehicle and he used to do little 
stuff on the road, but it was very critical for him to get to the top. Also, the other farmers were actually carrying their produce. This was a problem. So, with the intervention of this road, it greatly assisted the farmers because right now you can take your vehicle and go straight up to the end of the road where the more productive lands lie. The farm access road is well received by the constituency. This road, I see it as a plus for me. As you can see, I have a Jeep and it actually helps me to um, serve my farmers better and to also assist the farmers in getting their produce and their subsidies through and from the farm. It is hoped that the new feeder road will help to further propel agriculture in the cottage constituency. Last week we had a town hall meeting with the, with the people from Clifton to Tatan and most of them said that they are very, very grateful for this piece of road because it assists them, it helps them and a lot of them are talking about going back to the farms and also this road will also, also encourage those who are there to remain. So we're not only looking for farmers to come, but we are looking for farmers to remain in production and increase productivity. The construction of the Corner Heritage Park in Capuchin is expected to be wrapped up in six weeks' time. The modern facility will provide much-needed amenities for wedding planners. The $355,000 reception facility will feature a restaurant and restroom facilities. Kana is known for hosting weddings, um, a lot of tours from tourists and also edu educational tours from students as well who we'll visit periodically to learn more of the heritage and the history of Kana Heritage Park. Um, in 2015, we did some um, rehabilitation works and restoration of the, um, of the park with Dr. Anisha taking the lead on it. And you will see further down, we have an interpretation center, which basically displays the history um, of um, Kana Park. The new facility is being added to the Heritage Park in response to demands of visitors and residents. Because of the traffic we were experiencing at Kana and the demand for hosting events such as weddings, um, we really requested the construction of a reception center to include a restaurant and washroom facilities. Um, which you see right behind me. Um, that project started in fiscal year 2019-2020, but along the way we had a few challenges and we came to a halt um, for over a year. So no works um, were being done um, for over a year period. Work resumed last week to complete the project. The different people, what we're doing, you know, we're working on the windows, especially we're putting um, the latches and things for the windows and we have the guys and then we're taking care of the doors, trying to organize them. And the cupboards, the kitchen cupboards, we're trying to do some work on them too as well. And we have the plumbing sector, we're trying to organize the water part of it, make sure that water comes inside the place and current. The structure is built to exude resiliency in light of the island's vulnerability to hurricanes. The material we get, um, I guess that is the, that is the best um, gauge of material we'd need to, to do that kind of work because you cannot really go and put any material here in case of the heavy wind and whatever, it's going to destroy it. So I feel that is the best kind of material we're using to do this kind of work. The additional work is about $60,000, but the entire contract for the project is about $355,000 um, right, right before us. Um, with this um, project, we will add some new service and offerings up um, to Kana, and we're hoping that it will assist us in attracting more tourists and not just over the tourists but Dominicans as well can come to use the, the facility um, which is being managed by the tourism Capuchin, um, by the Capuchin Tourism Development Committee. Chilis Carbon John Baptist knows the history of Connor Heritage Park well and is pleased to see its progress and the addition of the restaurant and reception facility. She says it goes as far back as 1995 with the Northeast Tourism Environmental Committee. The community of Capuchin, among all other communities in Dominica, in the north, we selected Kana Heritage Park. Through Dr. Nelson Honey Church, we forged a cooperation with VSO. They are voluntary overseas persons who are 
professionals in their capacity and they lend their services to the communities. So we put a development plan together. We have since had the interpretation center and now we are focusing on a, a, a restaurant to facilitate when someone comes, you walk from the trail, you can get something to eat or you order. That's where we're at. We had a little struggle, but I'm happy to say that it's on its way. Mrs. Carbon agrees this new facility brings a lot of added value to the Connor Heritage Park experience. Yes, 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 yes. Persons are, are being... Rec you mean it's not there yet? I came from Scott said just to come because there are persons who want to leave one point and come to another point just to have a good time. And now they know that there, there's a facility there that... Yeah, that that's, that's what they are depending on, that when they come, they can just sit there, relax, eat, drink. That's it. Because, it, you know, it's a way of supporting because they know that the Capuchin Tourism Group is a voluntary group. And we will do whatever it takes to ensure that Kana Heritage Park is Kana Heritage Park. The new restaurant and reception facility, which is 70% complete, is also expected to cater to guests at hotels in the north. It's a win-win, and, and what we are seeing, since we have the, since we had the upper unit of Kipinski, which is now Intercontinental um, um, Hotel, we, the, 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 the tourism committee have been getting a lot of requests from the hotel to have organized tours from, from their guests. And sometimes when they come, you know, they would ask, to have something to eat and love to return to Tukari or to be able to have that, you know. So the request is there for that and I think the, the committee is very excited that they can have that facility to, to offer that, that service. And Capuchin on its own is a very strong cultural community as well, you know. So the product they offer is, is sort of unique. So they mix culture into everything they do. So the last wedding we had, there was a cultural wedding. People were dressed in Madras and the national way, you know, which is very unique. So that's the kind of offerings that they, um, um, that they offer. And of course, they like to express themselves to the unique cuisine that we have in Capuchin as well. You know, so it's a plus for us. It will help create and generate um, more employment um, in the community. We'll have farmers in the community itself um, be able to dispose of the commodities by selling directly um, to the restaurant as well. And of course, we will, it, had, it adds to Dominica's tourism product by adding value to what already exists. Um, so the Ministry of Tourism can have additional stuff to market. The parliamentary representative says there are costings already in place to enhance the safety and security of the area by reconstructing the stone wall along the cliff on the property's edge. The access road to Connor Heritage Park will also receive attention to make it more motorable. Residents are being encouraged to see this investment as an opportunity to launch their own small businesses. We're encouraging persons in Capuchin who have um, space and ap apartments and extra rooms to even market itself as Airbnb as well because somebody may want to overnight in Capuchin and spend a weekend with us here at Kana. You know, so you could see the, the spill-offs, you know, this one project can create, you know, by creating other opportunities for persons, for persons right here. The new facility will complement segment 13 of the Waitukubuli National Trail, which begins in Penville and culminates at Kana Heritage Park. So after working for, walking for two and a half hours and you arrive here, that's a perfect rest stop. You can have something to eat, something to drink, and overnight if you wish, and continue segment 14, which starts right here and ends up in Cabrits. So from one national park to the other, um, you know, we create a kind of network and offerings. You know, so and we're very happy for that. I want to thank the Ministry of Tourism for considering that to ensure that it's one of the priority projects that will complete before the next fiscal year. I've been at them and they responded, so I want to thank the Minister and the PS for really facilitating that. The contractor has given reassurances that he will meet the deadline for completion of the project. Yes, I will, definitely. I, I, cannot, I cannot let them, I'll, I'll, I'll try to push to try to finish up. Coming up next, the Creole News highlights with Jeno Jacob. Bienvenue à ce nouveau la Creole, nom c'est Jeno Jacob. Parliamentary Representative Gwambe, Honorable Vincent de Sindi, Gouvernement Kabati, et yon de facilité neuf en Gwambe. Moun dibik ke benefie, ou de kai Gouvernement Kabati Bayo, en centre. Honorable Vincent de Sindi, a sou yon to, et puis Ministre Sécurité, Honorable Reuben Blackmore, semaine passe, pour moutwe media, pour ce gouvernement ka fe en développement Gwambe. Nous ka construyo un place pour moun vini, 
pour y ni réunion, pour y ni affaires, en anglais, comme il dit, c'est ça, nous avons fait ça. Donc, ça a, ça a, ça a bâti, et nous avons nous qu'il nous, est fini dans combien de mois, peut-être six mois, mais tout de suite, nous avons fini tout le travail là, et nous avons ni place, nous avons eu ça, 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 Actuellement, uh, Geneva Playing Field, nous nous ni nous ni bol ka joué. Bol bol ka wè vè vè ces pays Winwood Islands, nous ka joué bol pour ces ces jeunes monde là qui en bas 19 l'année, année yo ka yo ka joué et vè yo ka yo yo um, samedi nous ni au gauche go um, joué ka ka avec um, ma ma ka changé que mon ka joué mais tout ça ça moi connait il y a des gens qui Parce que pour six semaines, les gens qui ont été sortis, ils sont venus voir le bol, ils ont été supportés, ils ont été jeunes, ils ont été contents de voir ça. C'est depuis sept ans que nous jouons en scène. Actuellement, nous sommes contents pour voir ce qu'on a fait là. Nous avons joué le bol, nous avons joué le football. C'est un monde qui a joué le rang d'âge, nous avons joué le rang d'âge aussi. Sur la place là, ça a mangé, et bien, moi, je suis content de voir ça. C'est un bon temps pour, pour, pour mon Gouambé. On a besoin de ce gouvernement qui a commencé d'autres projets en Gouambé. Nous avons commencé l'école euh, euh, première, nous, nous avons commencé l'école là. Et bien, nous avons mangé toujours, nous avons débuté pour faire, mais c'est un égal à l'école. Et bien, je suis content de voir ça. Planté et puis résident Constituency Cottage, compte en réhabilitation fait dans la route Clifton. Planté a abandonné le jardin parce que Chimien était mauvais. Par le rep, Honorable Roland Rouillet dit le travail à ce Chimien jardin commencé à faire par le rep qui dernier par le rep là, Honorable Reginald Austri. Honorable Roland Rouillet dit le premier ministère Dominic Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt supporté pour GIA. À présent, autant planté en Constituency Cottage, vous vivre en agriculture. Ça a hausser la production agricole en Constituency Cottage. Extension Officer Agriculture dit que bon chemin a fait travailler meilleur. Résident Constituency Cottage qui est entré en Yon Health Center 9 en bas de la programme. Le gouvernement a bâti Health Center en Savan Pai l'année passée. Le gouvernement a gagné équipement neuf pour Health Center. Il y a une grande cérémonie plus bonne ou plus tard cette année. Par le rep pour Constituency Cottage dit que le gouvernement a supporté le développement de Constituency Cottage. Planté a aussi planté six mois en un projet. Par le rep là dit que le gouvernement a mis autant d'attention à ce Constituency Cottage. Ça, c'est tout à ce nouvel en créole. Non, M. Geno Jacob, au revoir. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I am Elisa Burton. Thanks.